Hello and welcome to MATLAB Programming for Numerical Computations. We are in week number 5. In this week, we are covering methods for solving nonlinear algebraic equations of the form fx equal to 0. In lecture 5.1, we covered introduction to nonlinear algebraic equation solving techniques as well as covered one technique known as bisection method. In lecture 5.2, we covered MATLAB function called f0 that can be used to solve the equation in single variable. In today's lecture, we are only going to cover single variable fixed point iteration method. So, uh, the fixed point iteration is also known as method of successive substitution. The reason for this will be clear in a couple of minutes from now. Uh, a related module from computational techniques course is module number 4, lecture 2. Uh, the link for which is given below. That's the 10th lecture in the computational techniques course. Uh, the fixed point iteration, instead of solving the equation of the form uh, fx equal to 0, it instead solves an equation of the form x equal to g of x. Now, question is, how are g of x and f of x related? Okay, so if we were to rewrite this equation as x minus g of x equal to 0 or g of x minus x equal to 0, we would have recast this equation as uh, the equation f of x equal to 0. Uh, we should note that uh, g of x is not a unique representation of the overall uh, uh, function. Okay, uh, So, there are multiple ways in which we can convert f of x into g of x. Okay, So, uh, looking back at the equation that we want to solve, the equation that we want to solve is x i plus 1 equal to g of x of i. So, what it means is that we start with initial guess x0, okay, and in this equation, in this original equation, we just substitute the value of x0. The result that we get, we assign that as x1. Okay, next again uh, x1 we substitute in our function g of x, the result that we get we assign as x2, so on and so, uh, so forth. So, what we are actually doing is we are successively substituting x of i into the equation and getting x of i plus 1 and therefore it is also known as method of successive substitution. Uh, now, this method is not guaranteed to converge under all conditions and when it converges and when it does not converge has been also um, studied quite extensively. Uh, what we will do in today's lecture is this, we will take up the example that we have been doing for the last couple of times, 2 minus x plus ln x, convert it uh, into the form x equal to g of x and see what solutions we are going to get when we solve this in MATLAB. The two ways I have shown over here are you just take this x onto the right hand side and you will get x equal to 2 plus ln x. Other option is take these guys to the right hand side and get an exponent that will result in uh, x, ln x equal to x minus 2 or x equal to e to the power x minus 2. So, in case 1, we have g of x equal to 2 plus ln x. In case 2, we have g of x equal to e to the power x minus 2. What we will do is try to find out which method, uh, sorry, uh, which equation for g of x leads to which solution. Uh, we have seen previously that there are two solutions to this problem. One solution is 0 0.1586. The other solution is 3.1462. Okay, depending on whether we start to the left of this solution, whether we start between these two solutions or whether we start to the right of this solution, we are going to get different results using the fixed point iteration and that is something that we are going to study in today's lecture. Okay, so when it comes to the fixed point iteration, what we are going to do next is to look at solving x equal to g of x for this formulation as well as for this formulation for different initial conditions. Okay, So, let us head over to MATLAB and do, uh, write our codes to do the same. Edit uh, fix pt iter. So, that is a new file that I will create to solve nonlinear equations using fixed point iteration. 
case 1 g of x is uh, 2 plus ln x case 2 g of x is e to the power x minus 2. Okay, so let's say initial conditions and initial condition let's say we'll start between the two solutions initial condition is x equal x not equal to 1. Uh, we are going to do for several iterations. So let's say maximum number of iterations let's just put it as 50. Okay, and uh, let's now start for i equal to 1, 1, 2, max iter. Okay, so what our fixed point iteration was is just going to be x equal to g of x with g of x was 2 plus log of x. Okay, and that should be fine. Let's go on to MATLAB and just do help log to just ensure that log is indeed natural logarithm and not log to the base 10. Okay, yes, that indeed what it is. So log is for natural logarithm. If we want logarithm to the base 10, which is not what we want in this problem, but in another problem, let's say if we wanted logarithm to the base 10, for that the MATLAB command is log 10 and log is the MATLAB command for natural logarithm. Let's clean the screen and let's go on back to our code. Okay, so we also may want to compute our error. So I'll just comment this for now. Let's say error equal to uh, abs of x minus x old and x old, we'll comment this also, x old equal to x. So whenever we run this simulation, once we have computed the error, then the current value of x we have just now we just stored in uh, x old and then we go back uh, to the iterations. Okay, and let's say computation using fixed point iteration. Okay, now what I expect, I expect there to be an error let's see whether you can look at the code and figure out what that error is going to be. Uh, anyway, I will head on to MATLAB and try to solve this problem and we'll see that we are going to get an error over here. And I'll go through why we got that error and how to fix it. So fix point iter, enter. Yeah, so we are getting an error which says undefined function or variable x error in line number 11. So let's click on this line number 11. What does the error say? Error says that at when MATLAB reaches line number 11, it does not understand the variable x. What does that mean is that the variable x is not in its workspace. So let's go to line number 11 and see what's happening. Okay, so that doesn't seem to be any problem with 11. So let's see what the problem is. We have defined x0. We have defined max iter, but at this point, we have not defined our variable x that appears on the right hand side over here. Okay, so what do we mean by an initial guess? Initial guess basically means that before the first iteration starts, our variable x should get the value of x0. So actually, I should be putting it at the computation part x equal to x0. So x in bracket 0 is x0, x1 is g of x0, which is what happens when i equal to 1, x2 is g of x1, which is what happens when i equal to 2, so on and so forth. So this is the change that we need to make. Save this and run it and we should be able to get the solution. So fixed point iteration, when we click, click that, we get the solution x is 3.1462. Let's now calculate what the errors and old values are. So let's uncomment this. Okay. Again, the same error we are likely to get over here if we don't change something. x old at this point is not going to be defined. So what I will do over here is I will also define x old as x0. 
okay and save this run this and when it has run the error has actually gone to zero we may not want to keep solving using fixed point iteration till error goes below the machine precision we need to decide a priori what our error tolerances are so the solution is 3.1462 we want the solution only up to let's say the fourth decimal place so therefore we can say that the error tolerance should be 1 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 and that should be sufficient for us so what we will do over here is say tall x tolerance in x equals 1e minus 4 and we compare whether the error is less than or greater than the tolerance so if err less than tall x then come out of the loop using the command break end okay this is exactly what we have done in our earlier lectures as well and now let's save this uh, let's add a command that will clear all the variables clear all and then let's run this and see what happens okay and we have run this with an initial condition of x0 equal to 1 our solution is 3.1462 our tolerance was 1e minus 4 and the error at which we stopped was 3.6e minus 5 we took 11 iterations in order to reach the error below our error threshold so that's all we have at this point of time uh, so that's a fair amount of information that we are actually able to generate through this one code okay so now let us change from x0 equal to 1 to x0 equal to 0 0.1 okay and when we change to x0 equal to 0 0.1 what's gonna happen is log of 0 0.1 will result in x as a negative number and we will eventually get our x value as an imaginary uh, or rather uh, as a complex number so let's run it and see what we actually get okay so as we had said that we get our x value as a complex number let's type out x x is a complex number and the reason why that happens is when we start off with x0 so let's say we were to just just copy this and paste it in the matlab screen and replace it with x0 our x value is minus 0 0.3026 now if we were to take log of x that's going to result in an imaginary or rather in a complex number and therefore at this stage we should not be continuing this overall method because we are not guaranteed to reach the solution that we desire if we were to desire if we were desiring a real number solution okay uh, so again uh, in this case it is we are we were lucky that we were able to reach the solution 3.1462 and our imaginary part of that complex number was zero that that may not always happen so if you are expecting a real valued solution and you get a complex number that's also a sign that you should break the loop that is solving it uh, however we are not going to change this code for now let's now try for a different initial condition let's take an initial condition of uh, x not equal to 4 and run this simulation when we run this with x not equal to 4 within 9 iterations we have again converged to 3.1462 let's take another x not let's say x not equal to 40 and see what happens if we have x not equal to 40 this takes 11 iterations in order to reach again 3.1462 so what we see over here is that if we were to use this particular g of x we are going to reach no matter where we start on this line we are going to reach the second solution if we start off too close to, uh, to zero we will actually get a complex valued uh, 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 result because we end up with logarithm of a negative number uh, during our computation okay so that's the first part of our solution technique the second part is if we were to solve this for uh, x equal to e to the power x minus 2 so let's go back to MATLAB and change this to e to the power x minus 2 okay and for us to be able to do that the only place 
this remains same our initial conditions back cyto remains same tall x remains same this part also remains same the only thing thing that changes is this particular line and this will change to exp x minus 2 e to the power x minus 2 okay and rest everything is also going to remain the same let's start with low enough initial condition let's start with an initial condition of 0 0.1 which is to the left of uh, the first solution let's save this and run this code when we run this code the code runs fixed point iteration has converged within five iterations okay and the solution is x equal to 0 0.1586 let's now start between the first and second solution let's say x0 was equal to 1 let's solve this run and it's converged in seven iterations and we have reached the converge converge solution uh, of 0 0.1586 again okay let's say we were to start at 3.1 which is very close to the second solution let's run this and see what happens we have taken 11 iterations starting with an initial condition of 3.1 again we have reached the solution x equal to 0 0.1586 so as long as we are starting to the left of this solution we are converging to the first solution let's see what happens if we start to the right of this solution if the initial guess was to the right of 0 0.31 uh, 5 let's say what we get so let's start with an initial solution of 4 save and run this okay and when we run this our x is going to be infinity okay even in 50 iterations our fixed point iteration has not converged it has indeed diverged so okay so let's again look at what this is x equal to e to the power x minus 2 so let's put it over here and if x was e to the power x0 minus 2 let's call this as x1 okay x1 was 7.39 x2 we will now calculate so x2 equal to g of x1 so we have put that we have press enter and from 7.34 we have gone to 219 okay let's say x3 was x2 e to the power x2 minus 2 and we have got 1.74 into 10 to the power 94 so as you can see the solution has very quickly diverged so what we have observed over here is if you start with g uh, if you take g of x equal to 2 plus ln x no matter where on this line you start you reach solution number 2 that is 3.1462 if you take g of x equal to e to the power x minus 2 if you start between 0 and the second solution you will converge to the first solution if you start beyond the second solution our uh, uh, fixed point iteration scheme is diverging okay so that is all that i wanted to cover in this lecture today okay so that is all i wanted to cover in this lecture today with that we come to the end of lecture 5.3 in lecture 5.4 we are going to cover a new method known as the newton raphson method which is probably the one of the most popular methods for solving non-linear algebraic equations so thank you for listening to lecture 5.3 and i will see you in the next lecture bye